lot of stuff is happening out on the server. We put our web pages out on the server and we request those web pages. But you can do things on the client's computer, so the user's computer, and that's where your JavaScript is going to run. Keep in mind that uh, people can turn JavaScript off, so you also need a fallback on the server, but you'll learn that in web programming. So keep in mind that as we do this, it's, it, this isn't full, completely foolproof, uh, but it all, it's very effective because the majority of people do have JavaScript on, and you can catch errors as they're happening. This is also showing an older type of validation. The newer type of validation uses something like jQuery and gives instantaneous validation. So as you type passwords, it tells you, is this a, a weak password, a medium password, a heavy duty password? You've probably seen all that with the color coding. Um, it'll tell you in real time if somebody else has already got that username if you're registering. So that's really what's coming in vogue now is the real-time validation as opposed to when you're all done with a form and you click, it says, oh, you missed these 18 different fields and you have to go and fix them all. Um, the, the real well-done web pages do that real-time and they use something like jQuery that, that you haven't gotten to yet. Here's some of the things that you'll pick up on this tutorial. One of them is the form tag itself and what the method does. So the method is going to take it to another page. Or when the, when the person clicks on the submit button, method is going to say, where is it going to go? You're also going to learn the difference between post and get. And I'll tell you the metaphors right now. Post is collecting all the information from the page and putting it in a suitcase and sending the suitcase to the server. The get is like an airplane pulling an advertisement behind it. And basically, the get takes that same information from the form and puts it on the URL that it sends to the server. So get is kind of very open and out there. And if you do a search on Amazon.com or, or, or even Google, you'll get these long, long URLs with all this gibberish on the end. Well, that's a get. You're looking at a get. A post in the suitcase you don't see. I'll talk about the NoScript tag. That's if somebody has their, their JavaScript turned off, you can give them a message. Tell them, please turn, ask them to please turn it on. And we'll talk about the events for the submit button. I'll show you how to use it, how to test for an empty string or an empty text field. <clears throat> I'll take you into the world of regular expressions. This is available in all computer languages or all modern computer languages. And it's, it's a really, really nice way to check for certain patterns. So you can look for all types of character combinations, characters and numbers, all types of things. Regular expressions are, are very, very useful. Um, some of the places they're used is to check to make sure a credit card is in the right format or a phone number is in the right format. And in order to use our regular expressions in JavaScript, we have a thing called test. So this is our regular expressions test. We use the test function to check things, dates, phone numbers, credit card numbers. So let's open up these two test forms. And if you run the page, here's your form. It, we, we made it very complicated. Here we have our first name, our last name. Notice the default information is built in. And then we submit the form with our submit button. So let's take and open up that code. And then I'm also going to open up my other file, too. And all this file is going to do, it has a title success login, and it's going to say, with the H1, it's going to say your login was successful. So if we get a successful login, then it's going to jump to this page. Here's our basic code. We're naming our form, and you can look at this in your source code. Normally, we use a prefix frm and then a name. Uh, here's our method is post. This is where we say either post or get. 
and then our action is test.html. I told you wrong before. I said that the file name is method. Method is either post or get. Action tells the program which page to go to next. And here you can see our form. Inside our form, we set up a paragraph. Here's our input box with our default value. Notice the naming conventions. are. We name it TXT. That stands for text box, first name. And you'll use this throughout all the languages you do. It's, it's very useful. Um, all the form objects have different prefixes. Down here, you can see we have a button. This is our submit button. And then here's another text box. Now let's look at our code and see if we have a no script. Yep, there's, a, there's not a no script in here. So we're going to have to add a no script. So in the body of your file, add, this, add a no script. So it's no script element. And then say, note, JavaScript is disabled. And then do a stop no script. Now you could make this message a little friendlier and say, oops, your JavaScript is disabled. If you enable it, uh, you'll see more things, or life will be better, or you'll have frosting on your cake. You don't want to get snarky, but you do want to let the person know to enable JavaScript. And if it's a very uh, non-technical audience, you might tell them how to enable JavaScript. And I'm going to go turn on my uh, web developer toolbar. And I can go in and say, disable JavaScript. And if I refresh my page, you can see my message comes up. Oops, your JavaScript is turned off. You might not be able to see all the stuff your neighbor can. Notice I'm using psychology instead of... Uh, preaching, or admonishing, or getting snarky. I'm saying, oh, you know, your neighbors can see some special stuff. Don't you want to be able to see that? Psychology is very use useful for programmers. Now, I'm going to be doing a, a lot here, so I'm going to turn my JavaScript back on. But you can see how that no script works. There, now my JavaScript's working again. One of the things you can do with a form is you can add on-click event. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called validate form, and it's going to return either a true or false. So if our form's valid, we're going to, we're going to return a true. And if it's not, we're going to return a false. And what this return does is that determines if you're going to run the form or not, if it's going to go to the next page. So add your on click return validate form. Now this won't work because we have to write this this uh, function. I'm going to put it right here inside of my button. So I'm going to say on click equals return validate form. Now if validate form returns false, then the, everything is going to stop. It's just going to stay on the same page. If validate form returns true, then it's going to go on to our test.html or the, the file that was in the form action. And if you go up and look at your form action, you'll see what file that is. Let's take a look at that. Up here is our form, and you can see our action goes out to test.html. So if our function returns true, then it's going to jump to this page. So let's go up and write our validation. Do I have the JavaScript in there already? No, look at that. I didn't even do the JavaScript. Shame on me. So put it up in your head. Put in your JavaScript. All right, let's take a look at this form and see what it's doing. 
First of all, we're going to assume things are empty or not valid. So we're going to say that our return value, we're going to set it to false. So we set that up right away inside our function. And then we're going to check each of the, of the form fields. So notice what we call them. We go into document, so this is really part of the DOM, but we say document.form1. Remember, that was the name of our form. And this is the name of our first text box. So we look at the value of that, but that's really its formal name. That's like calling me Mr. Peter K. Johnson, or even better, Mr. Peter Kendrick Johnson. So that's its long formal name, and then we look at the value of that, and we say, does that value equal equal an empty string, which is, quote, quote, there's no space in here. If you put a space in, then you're checking for a space, and you don't want to do that. Now, if the first field is empty, then we're going to do a pop-up. We're going to say, please enter your name, and then we're going to do document form one text f name focus. Well, this is a new function that you haven't seen before, and what this does is it jumps to that text box, which is kind of convenient because first we tell the user, hey, you didn't do something, and when they click on OK, the cursor jumps to that text box so they can type something in. Then we do another else if we do the same thing for last name. So we're checking first name and last name. If both of those are OK, so this is not empty and this is not empty, then it must be OK. So we do a return value equals true. That's the end of our if statements. And notice here we're doing an if, else if, and then a final else. So this, this happens. If, if none of these happen, then this else will, will trigger off. So then we return our value to, if it's true or false, we return that value. Now let's take a look at regular expressions. Regular expressions are really nice. You can look for patterns. And this is just going to be an introduction to regular expressions. You'll see those in, in, in you take other classes, and you'll be using regular expressions a lot. But, but think about regular expressions whenever you want to match a pattern. So for instance, American Express has this pattern on their credit card. Discover has one more digit than that. Um, MasterCard uses the same pattern as Discover. Visa is shorter, and so you can see each of these has a different pattern. So a smart form will say, well, give me your, your MasterCard, and if they type in a Visa, you can tell. Or if they check the box that says Visa, and then they type in a MasterCard, you can warn them and say, hey, you grabbed the wrong card. Now, Regular expressions look very weird, and they're very hard to document. I think the best way to show you what they look like is just to show you some examples. But the thing that makes them look weird is they use punctuation marks that we're used to in English, and they use them for a different purpose. Um, for instance, when we think of this, we say, oh, that's the dollar sign for U.S. dollars. Well, a regular expression, to the, a regular expression that means end of the line. If you see this caret up here or the up arrow, that means it's the, the first character in a line. And what we know as a period or full stop is, means any character. It's like a wild character. There's lots of uh, really good, useful reference tools out here. I'll, I'll point you out to the uh, regular, ex, ex, regular Expressions Library. And they have a really great cheat sheet. We'll just take a quick look at it. And you can see all the, char the different characters and then what they mean. And the nice part, again, is they give you some examples. So if you start doing regular expressions a lot, you'll, you'll find this very useful. 
Here's a really good example. Here's our U.S. phone numbers. And you can see here, the, this says the very first character. Here's the end of the line. And what this is going to do is it's going to match this set of characters and then this set of characters and this set of characters. So it's going to say we have to have at least zero or two through nine here and then three characters in the middle here's the dash and then another dash and then four characters so these are all valid this wouldn't be valid because it's not between two and nine this isn't valid because, yeah, because it starts with a one. And this one isn't valid. Why isn't this one valid? No dashes. So do you see it picked up a lot of things that were wrong and it let the ones that are valid, let them go through. Here's a regular expression for matching zip plus four US postal codes. And I, I spill. Do you see how hard it is to document these things? Now, this is similar, this slash right here and this slash is similar to putting quotes around a string. So, this is kind of how you separate out a regular expression in some languages. So, this says, okay, start at the beginning, the very first character, with exactly five digits. So, this says start with, with five digits. And then this phrase right in here, and I have it reproduced down here, that says that the grouping in parentheses can appear either zero or one time. So that's what that question mark says. You can either do this zero or one time. In other words, the, the plus four on a zip code is optional. But the, the plus four has to be at the end of the string, which is our question mark. And then if it is, in there, then it has to have this dash between the regular zip code and the floor. So this will be valid, and so will this. Here's a social security number, and you can see this is the numbers that you can have in the very first set and let's see, where's our dash? And again, you can here I documented what each of these steps is, and you can read through this. You see how much documentation it takes? Now, this is why mathematicians love regular expressions, because they're very concise and elegant. They, they capture a lot of, lot of information in a single phrase where people that think like English majors have to use all these darn words. Look how complicated our life is. And to a mathematician, this is nice, clean, simple, and very elegant. And after you use regular expressions a while and you get used to the, the language, this gets to be very, very friendly, very elegant. It sure beats having all these words. And you can see how a computer can handle this much easier than all this English, where you can spell things wrong and grammar and all that other stuff. So I take you through that whole thing on testing for zip codes. Now, how many of you are getting a slight headache at this point of regular expressions? Anybody? Oh, you can be honest, because I have a slight headache already, and I teach this a lot. Any headaches? Anybody looking cross-sided? All right, so here I have something for you. This is the, called the regex library. And let's say that I want, uh, let's say I want something on social security numbers. So I'll do a search for social security numbers. And I want to uh, rate them. I only want the best.
And here's a set of regular expressions along with descriptions and what works and what doesn't work. And I can copy and paste this into my program. This is also rated, uh, where's my rating? Yeah, here, the rating is the highest rating. So if, they've, if everybody out here has approved this five stars, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this one. This is a great one. I'm going to read about it, make sure it matches what I want. And I have several of them to choose from. I have this one here, a little less complicated. Also has five-star rating. Make sure it does what you want it to do. Look at there's three of them right there with five-star rating. So you can grab these, you can copy them, paste them in your code, and be done with it. Yay, I like that. And you can do this for phone numbers, postal codes, global postal codes, money, all kinds of stuff. So use that regex library and get your, get your regular expressions out there. You don't have to write them from scratch. So let's add that. In your form, add another input field. So go birthday. That would be the text that shows up on the page. And then do an input box. We're going to call it text birthday so we know this is a text box. Here's the type is text. The size is going to be 10, and our value, our default value, is going to be 01-01-2000. So do that down in your form. This goes inside your form element. So you could put it after, put it right before your submit button. Just a reminder, the value is your default value to keep you from having to type things in. And it's really effective with this kind of work because it gives you consistent uh, test information every time. When you go live with your program, you'd probably take these values out. But until then, you'll save hours of typing time by having these in. Let me just clarify things. What you want to do is, is you set this regular expression up. Now, notice it doesn't have quotes around it. Instead, we use these forward slashes on regular expressions. So regular expressions are not strings. They sure look like strings, but they're not strings. And then we come down in here, and first of all, we check for an empty birthday, and we call it by its full name, textbirthday.value, just like before. Now, this else if will go after your other else ifs. So you have one for what? Uh, first name, last name, and then do your else if there. And then you also check for your format. And here you can see... We are doing our data. We're using our our uh, object, our our date regular expression that we set up above, and we're using the test function, and we're testing against what's inside that text field. And again, that txt tells us that it's a text box. That turns out to be really, really useful when you do more advanced programming. Now, what's this? What's this exclamation mark? And programmers call this the bang operator. That means it's the opposite of that. So if this is true, this is saying not. So if it's not true, then throw up an error message. Because if this matches, the regular expression matches what they put in, then that's going to be true, right? So we're going to say if not true. So we're, we're doing the reverse there. Again, that's called the bang operator. Looks like an exclamation mark. All right, then here's the complete source code. And this will show you how the if else's stack up. So here's the if, and then here's the else if, else if, else if. And then all the way down, we have the else. And that catches everything. So now you should know what we have for method. You know, this is wrong. The method should be post or get. The action should be the file name. So I have to go fix that. That's, that's incorrect. Uh, you all have seen the no script element put to use. And you notice if you use Firebug that you're your stuff doesn't really trigger off until you hit the submit button. You test for an empty string with the double quotes. 
And what's the got you there? What's the, th the thing that people often do that's wrong when they're testing for an empty string? They put a space inside the double quotes. So then that's testing for a space. So you want nothing in between. It's just quote, quote next to each other. I've shown you regular expressions and how you can use them with a test function. And uh, hopefully you've, you've seen how useful they can be. And I also showed you a great place to get regular expressions if you don't feel like writing them yourself.